Hi everybody, I'm here with Drew Scrimpture from Agra AFC and from one of our local growers in Santa Rosa County, Ryan Jenkins, who does a lot of on-farm trials here. And today we're talking about the Apigee trial that's here in Allentown. So what did you hear about it and what made you decide to talk to Drew about doing this project here? This is our third year, I think. So third year. Three or four years ago I'd read an article about it in a, a grower magazine that kind of piqued my interest and I wondered with the rank vine growth that we have in this area with our climate I wondered if it would be a good fit for us so I started talking with Drew about it one thing led to another so we began testing it this is our uh, third year of trials with it um, it absolutely seems like it has a, a fit here in our area some of the things I wanted to know is I want to figure out how it works what's making it work are we it obviously you can see the the darker green strips out in the field um, it's controlling the plant growth but is it making the peanuts actually put on more peanuts or the peanuts that's there higher quality and more weight what what are we getting other than Does limiting it? the the canopy growth of the, the vegetative growth of it I know it's helping our disease pressure because it's able to get more air through the canopy so anyway that's we kind of began talking we've done some trials we've we've gotten some really good results and I think Drew Drew would like to say a little bit more about yeah, what he's tell found. us what Apogee really is and, and what it does? Apogee is a growth regulator. Uh, it's a BASF product. It's been around for several years. I think uh, it was initially brought to the market for uh, more uh, harvest efficiency, meaning being able to find the rows, get things lined up. As GPS came out, it lost it. But the active ingredient is prohexadione calcium. So... And I don't know much about that regulator. I mean, like I said, it was it was here or, or initially uh, it was uh, kind of broad as that harvest efficiency deal. And I started seeing, and I'm sure some of the same stuff, Ryan started seeing where some other guys were working with, peanut specialists and, and, and whatnot were working with it and had some pretty good yields. I mean, the, the uh, I think the common or consistent numbers like five to seven hundred pounds, and and so when Ryan mentioned, it, I said I've always wanted to look at it too, because several things are going on, you know, on the farms now that, um, you know, we're seeing yield increases from from lots of different technology, lots of new things that are here, and also seeing new varieties, and the the common thing in these new variety, new peanut varieties is growth. They're they're more aggressive than some of the older varieties that that people have been growing. So. It just seems like there's been a lot of excess growth in years where we're getting rainfall and in, in uh, you know, fields that has the potential to grow bigger vines. So it was one of those things where I, I definitely wanted to go back and look at it from, from you know, trying to put all that together. And uh, Have you noticed the difference between dry land and irrigated um, land applied yeah, for Yeah, I, I, I do. And, and Ryan, I mean, uh, Ryan's probably seen it in, in probably more actually in a sprayer and harvest acres than I, than I have but in our trials we have tried to target and we've, we've carried it from Ryan's and throughout some farms in South Alabama getting it in different environments but we've tried to target situations where needed you know the growth regulator on it you know it, to try to control that excessive growth or something to help it so that's where it's going to fit where you have high yield potential and kind of uh, potentially rank growth or, or excessive growth. Something else I wanted to uh, to really study this year. We've kind of done it, you know. I think it's better, but we haven't actually put a pencil to it and and tested it. I want to know um, if it's helping us get in there and be able for the peanuts to dry down quicker and us be able to harvest quicker. I mean, in this part of the world, an afternoon thunderstorm will come by and drop three or four inches, and you lose some of your quality and your and your yield when that happens. Um, so with these uh, newer varieties that have a lot more rank growth than what we're used to, I'm wanting us to actually measure and see by us controlling the, the size of the plant, are we able to turn, you know, some of these ranker varieties even early in the season or five or six days drying. So I'm wanting to see, can we, can we get more back to what we were used to, like three or four days drying? So that's something that we're going to be uh, watching this year too and seeing, seeing if it's helping us, even if it, even if it didn't per se raise the yield, if you can get in there and harvest your crop quicker, um, basically without with less liability, that's that's worth money too. So, so do you think it helps at all with at. any kind of fungicide application? 
I think you got to definitely, especially later you go in the season and getting into your beefier white mold sprays, you do have a canopy structure that allows, you know, better penetration and deeper, you know, uh, product to get deeper in that canopy. And, and Ryan mentioned it earlier, uh, airflow. I mean, you can, you can kind of look treated versus untreated and see that where, where you've got, you know, a situation where I think you get better airflow. I can't tell you, and I have not seen anybody's data or anything we've done to really compare that. It was, like I said, first just trying to play with it. The first year we did the same thing we did here. We did, you know, a, a basically untreated versus treated replicated trial. And then Ryan, you know, mentioned, you know, from my standpoint, I want to see what we can do rate-wise because it is, I mean, it, it's, it's a pretty good cost to it. But the return, you know, and a lot of, and it seems like the, the higher the return just on what we've done on farm has been, the higher rates. I mean, that's sure. where we've got the response. The response, the trend has been, in the three years we've done it, the higher the yield, the higher the rate, the more yield we're, response we're seeing. Uh, now, we did get it out last year. You mentioned kind of dry, dry weather or those conditions, and there was not, there was a, you know, a small reduction in yield. There was not anything I felt that really hurt the peanuts that's right there was like a 20 pound reduction in yield in one of the treatments and like a 20 pound response in the other uh, you know average of our three reps so you know to me at best it kind of just don't pay to do it and, and gonna be an unnecessary cost where you're in, in an environment that don't fit but especially like in dry land situations that's right i'm mike mulvaney cropping system specialist at the university of florida at the wfrec in j florida uh and i'm here with drew scrimshire looking at uh, on-farm apogee trials. It's something I've been interested in. I've seen some literature out there. I go to conferences. I talk to colleagues around the region. Uh, and, you know, Monfort's program up at UGA is showing consist pretty consistent yield differences. So it's something I wanted to try here. I heard Drew and Ryan were getting together to put together an apogee trial here. This year, it's my first year messing with it myself on station. So I have an interest in it. Anything that's going to bump our yields... It's great, might be cost prohibitive now, but maybe in the future there'll be generics Absolutely. or who knows what happens with the price point. If the technology's in place, we can move it out to the farmers. So that's kind of my interest in it. Uh, so I was coming out here and one of the questions I would have is, um, you know, here in rain fed agriculture where, you know, UGA, they have a lot of irrigation, they can turn the, turn the rain on whenever they want. But for us, uh, you know, if it turns dry and we, I know it says 50% lapping, 50% mm -hmm. of the laterals touching, but if it turns dry here and we're at 50%, what should we do? Yeah, that's a good question. I think the risk risk are very real in that situation. And, and, I, and I, this is based on kind of the observations and things that we have looked at on farm is that at, at what, I, what I think we're seeing is, you know, not a, a reduction or anything bad happening to the crop meaning you actually stop them they're not going to produce things like that but it is if it from what we saw if it if, if the rain shuts off after application to go out and this is just one trial but what, what we saw there is there's just pretty much no more growth you cannot you can't see the the situation where you got that dramatic of a visual to it it just never changed and uh the yields were you know comparable i mean didn't show a, a, a lot of reduction in yield and, and so, but the but the cost going into that is, is is the risk, you know. I mean that that is that is something real. Yeah. I think moving forward, though, you you almost do it in a you know a risk situation where if all the boxes are checked, even on dry land acres, and you're at the stage where you have your vines met or touched, I think I think that's where where you would want to go with it and take so that risk. With, with my take home message to a grower might be, it, and I don't know, we don't have data on this, but in our situation, if we got no rain in the forecast and we're not expecting vigorous growth Absolutely. for whatever reason, yeah, it's, then maybe hold off on that application until you, until you can get, get growing then. Grow I, I think so, and I think that needs to be strongly communicated too, because it's not going to be something you go out and spray and see these returns. I mean, it is about the environment that you're given and, and you know that potential what i call high yield environment which which, which means rainfall for y'all so or for for the area down here the growing region down here one thing i'd like to point out too you know we're talking about kind of the risk in the dry weather situation is here we have basically it's, it's uh the first year we did it, it was it was pretty much by the by the label by the book treated versus untreated here we the last two years we started doing by rates 
So we're doing a, a one application. The first label rate is 7.25 ounces. And then we're following that up routinely two weeks later if we're getting rainfall. Here, here we're just doing it kind of standard two weeks later. And the Followed seven up two weeks later with what rate? Four ounces, four ounces per acre. And I think the, the range is four to 7.25 ounces on the, the second application. So here we've had, we've had pretty good rainfall since the first application and you can't see this visual difference. I don't know what that's gonna look like in yield yet. I, surely there will be a response to it. But anyways, what I'm saying is it, it's outgrowing. It, it needed another application to hold that excessive growth back. And that's, that's pretty evident over all of our uh, two rate, well, we've had two applications applied here, that visual response there. So it may be some years that you want to use lesser amounts, what I'm getting at, or, or uh, um, you know, just a reduced rate or only one time using it to get, yeah, well, we're get still that control. New, this is new for us down here. That's so right. There's a lot of questions that we can, that we can answer. And then so. the variety, you, a lot of people has mentioned that, and I just right. named two off the top of my head that I'm very familiar with that gets really rank canopy and that's Florida 511s a lot of yield potential but 511s and they, and they created their their you know the, I mean they created such a I feel like such a disease pressure situation that always occurred on 511s you know going out looking at them late mainly with a leaf spot but and then uh, 297s seem to be um, a lot of vine growth and, and a very aggressive type variety. And then all the new old high oleics, and I don't look at as many, you know, vari peanut variety trials, but from what I gather, you know, from, from guys that are, and you, you may have seen this, is the new stuff is just big canopy, lot, lots of growth, aggressive type peanut plant. So mm -hmm. that's, that's, you know, something else that I think is gonna go hand in hand, take advantage of some of those, uh, you know, really superior grading type varieties as well as uh, you know high yielding situation too because the yeah. yields look favorable with those as well yeah so this looks like something you really want to put on some good dirt with that's some right high yield that's potential. right and i think that's it just understanding what variety what potential you got to get there and and your your field that's going on and what what those soil types with will allow highly highly productive vegetatively productive crop or, or canopy anyway that's right yeah yeah as far as here um and finishing this out, Ryan will do pretty much, I mean, manage it just as he would, you know, across all the acres. I mean, same fungicide spraying or pest management moving forward. Uh, we're, we're, we have been coming in with basically a plot sprayer, ATV sprayer, and spraying, you know, the strip trials. And we got uh, three replications of, of each treatment. And then we'll come in at harvest and we, we have a, a, a nut buggy, you know, that has scales on it that we will bring down and, and, and weigh those off Ryan's picker. And then have each treatment um, and each rep will actually have the moisture and, and graded. We'll carry it to a, to a sheller and let them grade it and give us the grades too. So, um, but that'll pretty much be how, how we carry the trial out. I, I've, I've, have thought about trying to go down and get any growth type parameters, plant heights, or anything that I could, or disease ratings, you know, here as, as we start to mature out, just to see if there's any, any difference in leaf spots or white mold or anything else that may show up. So, and always open for, you know, suggestions or any, any, any collaboration, anything anybody wants to do. I mean, what our focus is for Ryan and the growers in this area to, feel confident you know going on farm it's just a demonstration work directly with them but so they can have that you know make decision moving forward so my contact information is uh drew drew s at agrafc.com that's my email and then my phone number is 256-431-8116 and um i pretty much have have a truck as an office so i'm on the road all the time but you can reach me on, on the phone or email about any time